From the Jennings Communication Building on the campus of Dixie State University, this is Trailblazer Weekly. Welcome inside Trailblazer Weekly. We are back live in the Jennings Communication Building on the campus of Dixie State University. I'm your host, Drayson Ball. Thank you so much for joining us. We've been off for a couple of weeks, but we have got a loaded show for you today. Head coach John Judkins of the men's basketball team joins us a little bit later on. Plus, it's National Signing Day. That means head coach Paul Peterson of the football team will be joining us to talk about all the new recruits that have been signed as newest members of the Trailblazer football team. But let's begin, as always, with our Blazer Beat. <laughs> First up on our Blazer Beat, Volleyball has begun their season and already a couple of matches in. They are 3-2 and two overall on the season and they defeated um, the University of Rio Grande Valley, uh, University of Texas Rio Grande Valley in their home openers, both in three sets, a couple of convincing three set victories over the Vaqueros from the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. Good to get those games started in volleyball, uh, three and two overall in the season, two and two in the Western Athletic Conference. Uh, men's basketball, a couple of games against California Baptist University. They split those two matches, uh, defeating California Baptist 79 to 75. Uh, last weekend against the Lancers had to be good for coach John Judkins to go into the CBU event center in Riverside, California and get a victory over those pesky Lancers. We'll talk to him about that renewed rivalry coming up just a little bit later on the show. And finally on our blazer beat uh, men's soccer and women's soccer begin play this week. Women's soccer begins today against Gonzaga University. We'll talk about that game just a little bit later on as well. It, it's going to be fun now. We're starting to get into that transition, that period where women's soccer men's soccer, uh, volleyball, football is coming up a little bit later on this month. Men's basketball is still going. We're getting into that time where all these games and all these uh, teams are going to be starting and it's going to be a lot of fun. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at DSU Blazer Weekly as we now transition out of our Blazer Beat and jump kind of into the meat of our uh, first segment here, the question of the day. And I just kind of had you know, obviously we've, we've not had a show for a couple of weeks, obviously through, through Christmas break, and we wanted to make sure we got these games going before we, we really started to jump back into to doing episodes every week. But uh, one of the things that I wanted to, wanted to talk a little bit about is kind of just my my first impressions of, of the, the Division I um, schedules that we've seen, and, and obviously talk a little bit about what I've noticed and, and kind of my first impressions of, of the performances so far of, of the few teams that we've got in action. Uh, obviously, I mentioned you know earlier on in, in, in the, the season that it was going to be a roller coaster. It was going to be an up and down kind of um, um, season. There was going to be a lot of things to learn from, and there's going to be a lot of ups, and there's going to be a lot of downs. Um, I, and I think we've, we've seen that. I think there's been some, some really high highs and, and some really low lows, especially for a few of the different teams out there. And I've mentioned this before. It's going to be a long process. And there's a reason they give uh, these these new Division One uh, entry teams four years of, of a window before they're they're postseason eligible, and it's because most Division Two teams that are moving up into Division One need that transition period to, to be able to really be competitive in Division One. Um, one thing, obviously, men's basketball they've they played the most games. They're five and eight um, after having women's basketball be canceled after just three games of the season. But one thing I noticed about men's basketball at the Division One level is it just seems like everyone one is just just bigger and and I'll use you know one of the games that, that we had here recently one of the one of the more marquee games that we had here recently was the University of New Mexico was able to come up uh, to Burns Arena and and, and play against 60 state and one of the things I noticed is just the size and the length of, of New Mexico's team compared to Dixie State's team for reference uh, New Mexico State's team New Mexico's starting lineup went 6-1, 6-5, 6-8, 6-6, and 6-9 was their starting lineup, and they were all extremely long, and uh, they also had 6-10 coming off the bench, and so you're not gonna see a whole lot of 6-10, seven-foot guys. We've seen several seven-foot guys uh, for men's basketball uh, throughout the season. You're not gonna see a ton of those guys at the Division II level. Uh, also, one interesting note about uh, men's basketball is that you know we've kind of seen in this two-pot schedule, uh, there's been one game that's been really, really competitive, and Dixie State has a chance to win, but then there's also 
also been one game that, that's been just been a blowout. And and you know, UT Rio Grande Valley, we lost by 33 one day, and then we, we lost by seven the next day. Against Garen Canyon, we lost by three the first day, and then we lost by 35 the next day. And, and then against California Baptist, we lost by 15, then we won the next the next day by four. But uh, that's kind of just the way that I feel like it, it's, it's, it's gonna be, because I think teams underestimate Dixie State a little bit, and so either they come in the first game and, and they underestimate us, and that's why the game is a little bit closer. Um, or maybe they come in and, and they blow us out the first game and then they don't really think that we can compete with them the next game. That's when it gets a little bit closer in that second uh, game as well. So very interesting stuff for this first little bit of, uh, of the, uh, the first Division One season here. But let's transition now in the final minute into our Rock Canyon Bank by the numbers feature. And our by the numbers feature is about kind of just the records that, that we have so far. Uh, obviously, very few teams have started. We're going to kind of really start to get into more teams starting over here in the next couple of weeks. But men's volleyball, or sorry, men's basketball, excuse me, like I mentioned, five and eight overall in the season. Volleyball are three and two, so they are the only team right now that are above 500. Short sample size with just five games. Women's basketball, obviously, one and two. They had their season, their season canceled just a few weeks ago, but they did finish their season one and two. Got to count those as well. And then tennis has started 0 and 5 for an overall combined record of 9 and 17 for the sports that have been competing so far. The ones that have record, obviously, women's swimming doesn't have a record because they just have individual meets. But of the teams that have a an overall record, 9 and 17 combined for the sports here at Dixie State in their first year of Division One. But first segment gone just like that. When we come back, we'll be talking about a whack walkthrough segment that we'll be highlighting one of the teams in the Western Athletic Conference to get to know them just a little bit better. Back after this quick timeout on Trailblazer Weekly. Radio Dixie 91.3, Young the Giant, something to believe in. John, what song do you want to hear? Next, Miss Calendris. Uh, 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 team, the best one team. Uh, uh, did a fantastic uh, situation. I talked to you, I was going to talk to you last time. Beyond the park you know exists a world you don't. A world that is greater. Greater than just one passion. Greater than just one adventure. Greater than just one moment. Come to where life is greater. Come to Greater Zion. Welcome back live inside Trailblazer Weekly as we continue on and talk about our second segment, which is going to be our WAC walkthrough. And we've done this from time to time as we have uh, wanted to go through the WAC and the new conference that Dixie State is in and highlight one team and uh, kind of get to know them just a little bit better. And this week's WAC walkthrough team is California Baptist, a team that Dixie State knows very, very well from their days in the Pac West, one of the better rivalries um, in the Pac West, uh, the Dixie State and California Baptist, the Lancers out of Riverside, California, probably one of the teams that is most similar to Dixie State in terms of size with an enrollment of 11,317. Dixie State right around that 11,300 mark as well. And uh, Dixie State this season will play California Baptist or has already played California Baptist in, the t in terms of uh, men's basketball. Plays them in men's basketball, men's and women's soccer, volleyball, baseball, and softball. Those are the teams that will be playing against California Baptist and the Lancers this season. Uh, California Baptist, as we know, they moved into the WAC back in 2018. Their final season in the Pac West and in Division II was back in that 2017-2018 season in which Dixie State, the men's basketball team, went into uh, the CBU Events Center and uh, defeated the Lancers on their home floor to win the Pac West Championship that year. One of the most thrilling games uh, that we've had in the Division II era. They, now, they moved into the WAC following that season and uh, um, 
it's going to be a fun rivalry going forward. Um, just a quick note on a couple of teams. Uh, for California Baptists that have had success over the last uh, season that they've been in the WAC. Women's basketball, women's soccer, and baseball all finished uh, in second place in the Western Athletic Conference back in 2019. So there is some stiff competition, even though uh, the Lancers are relatively new to the Western Athletic Conference and we have played them as recently as 2018. They have definitely improved and gotten into that Division One and, and been able to play uh, really well. And, I, and I'm really looking forward to this, this rivalry with California Baptists. It was always so fun to go to those games uh, the baseball games or the men's basketball games or whatever it may have been um, in the in the R, in, in the Pac West and in Division Two and uh, and play um, the Lancers and it's going to be a lot of fun going forward and they're going to be in our conference for uh, a long time to come. It's going to be fun. But uh, that is our WAC walkthrough. When we come back, head coach John Judkins joins us to talk about that victory last weekend over the Lancers and we talk about much much more coming up after this timeout on Trailblazer Weekly. There's a rush coming. Well, let's rush best nine plays from last week in Region 9. Number one better be good. One handed grab, and Luke Wright is going to score a touchdown on one of the better grabs you'll ever see in high school football. Lawrence, are you going to do anything, or are you just going to sit there? This is Henry Bouchard, Cape Girardeau, Missouri. I never found a customer base more in need of fine American made sucking power. Then I found up and down the Wasatch Front in the mid-1980s. There's one thing coaches love, it's media guys telling them how good or bad their team is. My pick for the 4A state championship this year when it comes to football is the Stansberry Stallion. Give me a break. This isn't a contest about who can shovel the most corn silage. I like Pine View. show is brought to you by the Dixie State Campus Store, the official source for DSU Trailblazer clothing, providing students with textbooks as well as educational, office, and art supplies. Located on the second floor of the Gardner Center, the Dixie State Campus Store, proud sponsor of Trailblazer Weekly. Welcome back inside Trailblazer Weekly as we march on on a Wednesday afternoon. We're joined by head coach John Judkins and the men's basketball team is off to a 5-8 and eight start in their first season as Division I. Coach, thanks so much for uh, taking the time to come on our show today. Thank you for having me. Wanted to start off, I mean, it's obviously been, you know, kind of an up and down crazy schedule for you. I'm sure it's been, uh, there's been some fun parts. There's been some, you know, parts where you've, uh, you know, you wanted things to go a little bit differently, obviously. But uh, I just kind of want to talk about first, you know, just your overall impressions of the season. We're already halfway through, believe it or not. Um, just give me your overall thoughts. What have you seen that you've liked? What have you th seen that you guys need to work on going forward? Just give me your overall impressions of the season. So uh, that's a good question. Um, Obviously, I'm happy we're playing. Uh, when I see the high schools that we're talking to uh, recruiting guys that aren't playing their senior year or whatever, I'm just glad that uh, that we're playing. Uh, great for our kids, um, even though I know it's tough. It's it's hard with uh, making a jump from Division One to Division, or excuse, Division Two to Division One. That's the first thing. It's hard, and then all now with this COVID stuff, it even makes it even harder. So, um, it's it's made me try to be a little bit more patient than I normally am uh, because it's nothing we can control. It's, it's tough, but uh, we're playing great teams. And then you have, you know, the COVID thing. The one thing I asked my guys, you know, is it hard for them? And, and their thing was, oh, coach, it's hard because you get so excited to play. And then all of a sudden, the day before you get, oh, sorry, it's canceled. And so they're, they get up and down really quick. And that, that's tough. That's tough on the, on the players. We as coaches, are preparing no matter if we're playing or not we're going to get them all prepared and then you wait till thursday morning and they say okay we're good to go and you get on the plane or get on a bus and and head out so that part's hard um, you just don't know if you're going to play or not but uh, you know the competition is really good i mean the the division one we knew was going to be tougher we knew that um, so when you said there's some good things this season yeah we wish we could have won some more games uh, we, there's a couple of games I think that slipped by us. I think New Mexico would have been a one we probably should have won. Um, you know, the Gonzaga thing, that was a fun experience for our guys. It's just tough that we didn't have our whole team there with the, with the COVID stuff, but uh, what a great experience for them. And then we didn't get to play Weber State. We didn't get to play Utah State. We didn't get to play New Mexico State early in the year. We will at the end, but uh, you know, those are games our guys were kind of looking forward to early in, in the year. And so not playing those was, was kind of a tough thing for us. 
Uh, let's talk a little about, you mentioned uh, the University of New Mexico. Good to get that game in here in Burns Arena, and obviously they you know, had uh, a game here as well uh, a few days later. I wanted to use that and talk about my next point. Is there something that you've noticed about Division One that maybe that had surprised you? I mean, with New Mexico, <laughs> it seemed like they were all you know big and long, and they had you know long arms, and they played really long the, the entire team. Is there something like that that you've noticed that maybe surprised you about Division One? No, no. I, I mean, obviously, uh, the, where I see the difference in D two and D one is is size. Um, they're bigger, they're stronger. Um, that, that's something that we have to work on. Our, we do, we're doing it great with. Our strength coaches, they're working hard and getting stronger. It's not that. It's just getting recruiting bigger guys. Uh, but the game's changed a lot, too. So, um, you know, you see a lot more fours. Like I mean, like last weekend against Cal Baptist, uh, there was four guards and one big. They didn't have a, a four-man that was above 6'5". And so it was a tough matchup that way, too, for us. So uh, I don't know. It's, it's, but that's where I normally see it is just the size. They're just bigger, stronger. Um, where I see the biggest difference is – his coaching staffs, his trainers, his strength coaches. I mean, they travel with everybody. Um, you know, I mean, he saw us against Grand Canyon. Uh, J Jake, my assistant, was quarantined, and then Dave Foster, his wife, they had a baby. So it was me and Andrew was the only two there, and they had, you know, 10 coaches on their bench. So that, that, those are the biggest things that I see the difference, and we're getting it there. Um, that, that's what our president and AD have said, that we're going to try to, you know, step by step to get where they need to be. But, uh, but it, it's fun. Division One's, you know, I think the fans like it. Um, they, know, they know teams who are playing. And, and to get that New Mexico game, um, even though we didn't play great, was a big one for us. To get a team like that to come home, to come to play in our hometown, in our court, I thought that was big. That would have been a fun one, especially if we didn't have COVID because we could have packed it and, and had, a, you know, hopefully a whole different turnout. But to get those, hopefully they'll play us again. You know, I thought they were great. We were great with them. That, that's all they said were, you know, hey, thanks for working with us because they're in a tough spot. I would not want to be in that, that spot. So uh, that, that was fun. And, uh, but hopefully we can do that again and play better. Yeah, certainly a fun game for me to watch and one that, you know, you feel like you could have had there right there uh, towards the end. Let's talk about the, kind of the scheduling as far I know you get this question a lot and, and it's, it's a question I think needs to be asked. The pod type schedule where you play two, the same team back to back uh, on two, two days. How has that been difficult? How has that been an adjustment? What have you noticed about this kind of scheduling that they had to do for the COVID? Well, the, the only good thing about it is, um, is everybody's doing it. You know what I mean? Everybody, there's no advantage of their team playing on a Thursday because they won't let that happen. Um, but it's really hard. Um, the, the advantage they made make it a little bit better was playing the same team, you know, because you're already there, you're already in the hotel. Um, that, that part's not a big deal of travel because the reason why they normally do a Thursday, Saturday is that the Friday day is the day you travel to the next site. Um, but, but that extra day, and you, you should ask this question to our trainers, uh, because that, that extra day in between makes a big, big difference uh, with these student athletes, with their bodies, with the injuries, with the, you know, just the pounding of their legs. I mean, if you came after our game on Friday nights and saw us in the train room or see us in the hotel, um, you know, we get Kelby, our trainer, give him a room that's got two beds. Um, just because there's so many guys in there, we throw them on that. That's their training room, is that hotel room. And, and he's done a great job of trying to get them uh, where they need to be. We've tried different things and bringing different kind of food and different things in, trying to you know, get carbs in them as quickly as we can for a Friday night. So it's, it's really a tough thing for the student athletes to bounce back that fast. Coaching-wise, it's good and bad. Um, when you lose a game, it's, you're great that you play right away because you're – pretty upset and you want to get out and play again. Um, but, you know, there's, there's a lot of strategy in that second game. And to make adjustments from watching film, you know, you're up till 12, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning trying to make those adjustments. And then you're getting up in the morning and, and showing the guys, hey, we got to change this, change this, change this. It's, it's tough. It's a tough thing. But like I said, everybody's got to do it. I get it. I get why they decided to do it. But I was hoping that we could have had the Thursday night game and then a Saturday afternoon game and, and got home and, and got our kids some rest on Sunday. So that's the only thing I don't like about it is they now we're getting home Sunday afternoon, Sunday night, and they're not, they don't really have a chance to, to really rest and get ready for the next week. 
Yeah, it's got to be make it difficult for those players playing back to backs every single week. Um, head, talking with head coach John Judkins here, live on Trailblazer Weekly as we uh, continue on. Um, a five and eight overall in the season so far, and uh, you got your first whack win over uh, a California Baptist. Had to have been nice to go into to CBU and get that victory over a, a longtime Pac West rival, and now obviously you're going to kind of renew that rivalry now in the Western Athletic Conference. Had to be nice to go in there and get a win against the Lancers. Yeah, it was. I mean, you know, you look at our our uh, six whack games um you know first at uh, rio grand valley i mean we we got killed the first night second night we we i thought we had a really good chance to win let that one slip away and then we played grand canyon here first game we lose to them by three had a chance to tie it you know it, it was a good game all the way around and they're first place in our conference so then we I just thought hey we got to play two games good in a row and and friday night i thought we played well the score did it looked like it was a bigger blowout than it was. Um, you know, going back, they had stretches where they just made a run and went on an eight nothing run to push that up. Um, but we were right there, and so I think we thought we had a good chance of Saturday. Made some adjustments. Um, again, I think it, I think the back to back games hurt them more than it hurt us because uh, they're only playing about six guys, and their point guard played the whole time. He never came out. Forty minutes Friday, forty minutes Saturday. So. We kind of used that to our advantage, got out and ran a little bit more. And, and uh, you know, but that game, it, it brought back a lot of those D2, especially at Cal Baptist. You know, we felt comfortable in that gym. We've been in that gym. The last time we were there, Division Two, we won the conference there, the conference tournament there. And so our guys, I think some, some of our guys weren't even there. But again, just the feel of it, um, we felt pretty, pretty comfortable there. Um, they run a lot of different stuff than they did before, and so do we. Um, and so it was just a, a fun battle to have that. That's going to be one of our rivals, I think. They're, they're close enough, them in Utah Valley, and now with SUU, SUU jumping into our conference, that'll be another one. But that's always been a big rival. And so our guys were ready to play, and it was fun to see them come out and win. Yeah, I'm sure you had had to have some flashbacks to that 2018 <laughs> Pac West Championship as you were walking into the CBA. Oh, event totally. You put us in the same locker room. I mean, it was, it was fun and funny because Dason – was here watching in the crowd, watching his brother Daler play that, that game. So he, he remembers it. You know, that was one of the guys that kind of did. So uh, you're right, but they still remember it. Those guys did because when I got there, all their assistant ADs and their helpers were like, oh, I remember last time you were here. So it's, it's a fun rival. It's a, they treat us well. I think we treat them well. Uh, it's just going to be one of those big rival games every year. It's going to be fun to watch. Coach, we're just about 30 seconds left. Just kind of give me a quick summary of kind of what you guys expect for the rest of your season. Obviously, more than halfway through now, you bring in Seattle University this uh, weekend into the Burns. Kind of what are your goals going forward towards the end of the season? Well, we want to keep winning. That's the whole idea. That's why you play this game is, is to win. Um, you know, it's weird to think that you're halfway or over halfway done with your season. We've only played 13 games. That's kind of weird um, because I think our guys are starting to come. It, it, it normally this would be like a end of December, January kind of a thing is where you see your team start to gel. Uh, and right now we're doing that, but it's February. It's kind of weird. So, uh, you know, Seattle's a very good team. Um, they lost in overtime. Their last game they played, they lost in overtime against Utah Valley. They have two guards that are quick and quick and everything goes through them. So we have to do a really good job of defending it. But, uh, you know, it's going to be nice to be back home. Uh, the crowd makes a big Big difference, you know, the Grand Canyon game, Bryce Stanley, that, that was fun to play in front of a thousand people. And we hope that we can get more out this weekend. But this would be a big weekend for us to see if we can turn that corner, um, you know, and, and finish strong. And, and we, we don't have any postseason play, but we want to finish as strong as we can. And this would be a big weekend for us. Well, for Coach, it's been fun to watch you. It's been fun to see the transition, and uh, I'm certainly uh, a big fan of yours, and hopefully we can continue to win some games and, and get this first season of Division One over. He's head coach John Judkins of the men's basketball team. Up next, we're going to be talking to the head coach of the football team because it's National Signing Day. Head coach Paul Peterson joins us after this quick timeout. Artemisia is all the same pressure, but there's your needle and thread. Which one is this? Time apart has taught us. In our social distance, we found space. Space to ponder. Space to connect, space to imagine, 
space to heal. In the emptiness, we found meaning. In silence, we found beauty. In separation, we've discovered there is so much more to find when we find our space. Find your space. Radio Dixie 91.3. We don't play that. Nope, not that. A big fat no there. That's what we play. And stuff like that. On St. George's only alternative, Radio Dixie 91.3. Oh, and from 9 till midnight, we play this. I need a one dance. And this. Radio Dixie 91.3 FM. Welcome back inside Trailblazer Weekly. We're joined now by head coach of the football team, head coach Paul Peterson. As it is National Signing Day, we've got a handful of new signees, uh, new players for this Dixie State football team, and we're glad to be talking to head coach Paul Peterson about these new signees. Coach, thanks so much for being on our show. It's always a pleasure when you get to join us. Thanks. Love it. Let's, uh, let's just start right off. Uh, obviously, National Signing Day, it's one of the biggest days, non-game days uh, yeah. of the offseason. Um, let's, let's talk about you know, the recruits that you, that you were able to go out and sign. And, and I wanted to start and preface it kind of asking you, was there any sort of uh, area of the, of the team or, or a specific position, or maybe it was more offense, maybe it was more defense, yeah. any specific areas of the team that you felt like you really needed to address in this signing class? Yeah, definitely. Well, one of the, one of the things that we feel really, really bad about is this uh, – is, is the kids not being able to play and um, with, with the COVID restrictions and there's some really good athletes out there. We were very, very selective um, with who we decided to sign. And, um, you know, I, I think we, we lucked out with some of these kids that maybe in another year wouldn't, uh, wouldn't uh, uh, be considering us because they'd be at a higher level. That's, that's my opinion of them. They're, they're fantastic. You know, we, we definitely had some needs to fill. Not very many guys uh, leaving after this semester, or even the fall. So there wasn't very many spots. So normally we've had bigger signing classes uh, in the past, and this one's fairly small. Um, you know, we address some needs at the defensive line position. Um, that's, the, that's the one that we signed the most guys. I think we signed six guys out of there, and, and um, I thought we did a really good job. Coach Fongopo did a good job. You know, with our recruiting visits, there was, there's no uh, on or off campus contact with the student athletes, so we, did, we got really good at Zoom. And um, our coaches did a really good job of showing what we have here as, at the school. And um, it was a good fit. And I think there's a lot of trust with these, with these guys, um, with, with as far as us and us trusting them to not being able to shake their hand and look them in the eyes. Um, and um, I, thought we got, I thought we got a really good class. We're excited about it. Well, let's, uh, let's talk about uh, first uh, on the offensive side of the ball. I know we have a, yeah. a few guys there to talk about. Um, let's jump into maybe you know, quarterbacks and, and wide receivers, maybe some skill position guys yeah. that you have. Talk about a few of the guys that we're able to sign. We're really excited about our quarterback, um, Kenyon Oldblad. You know, he's he's at a legacy high school in, in Las Vegas at UNLV. You know, he's a he started uh, he started in 2019 as a freshman and, and played some really big games. You know, you know he beat uh, beat Vanderbilt and SEC at their place, and um, he was the conference player of the week. And so he's a um, and as a freshman doing that, he had a two to one uh, touchdown interception ratio, which is awesome as a freshman. So he's he's got a ton of upside. We're super excited to add, add him to the competition that we already have in our quarterback room with Cody and Kobe. And um, so he's definitely adds value to us. Um, you know, we didn't, we didn't, um, we weren't looking for, for offensive line for right now, but we, we did sign um, Andrew Springer out of Alta High School. He's going to serve a mission. We ended up signing seven missionaries. Um, so we'll get them back here in a couple years and we've got a nice little cycle of guys coming back next year as well. James Palmer, um, um, for us, uh, at, a, at a Sky Ridge High School, big tall receiver, 1,100 yards receiving, ton of touchdowns, great kid, um, and we're definitely excited about him. He's going to be serving a mission as well. I think that rounds out our offense. We, we only signed um, three guys offensively. Um, you know, talk about uh, Isaiah Afatasi a little bit. He was, a, he was our mid-year signee at running back. Um, had a scholarship offer to Utah State with the coaching change didn't work out. He's here with us right now practicing. And that guy's a, a, a jitterbug, man. He can he can move, so he's going to add value to our to our team as well. So, not very many offensive positions opened up uh, for us to offer scholarships. Although, like I said, there was a ton of really good guys out there. We had to turn quite a few kids away that we feel really bad about. But um, offensively, I thought we did. We filled the needs that we needed. 
Uh, circling back just quickly to, to one note on on quarterback Kenyon Oblad, uh, yeah. 2,000 yards and 18 touchdowns as a freshman yeah. at uh, UNLV. Certainly going to be a, a fun quarterback competition. Oh yeah, um, going into uh, going into games uh, later this month. All right, let's uh, let's transition now uh, onto the other side of the field, the defensive yeah. side of the field. Let's talk about um, offense or defensive linemen, uh, maybe some linebackers, and then maybe sure. transition into your secondary. Corners and yeah, so, so like I said, we signed some really, really good uh, defensive linemen. You can tell from the stats, tall and long, um, ton of developmental potential. That's kind of our recruiting pitch to these guys. You know, get them here. Um, we're going to get you in the weight room, get you bigger, faster, stronger. And um, we did, we did some, some really good things. Got a couple guys from out of state and some guys from in-state, just to name a few guys. T.J. McCray out of Centennial High School, Arizona. Big tall or big interior defensive lineman that we're excited about. Um, Cyrus Webster out of West Jordan High School, local local guy up in Salt Lake that we're excited about. Um, uh, Tyson Guild out of Durango High School, just down the street, defensive end, 6'5", 215 long, covers the field very, very well. Another big, tall, long guy, Jacob Gibson out of Mayfair High School, uh, defensive end, 6'6", 230. So you can see the length uh, that, we're, that, we're, that we're definitely trying to, trying to get. Nathaniel Pryor out of, out of Judson, uh, Converse, Texas. Um, really excited about that. I have a connection, old, old friend there is the coach there. Um, he's a big, big kid that can clog that hole for us in our nose and our four down and, and three down fronts. He'll be a, a great addition for us. Um, who am I missing? Rick, local, local. I'm going to mispronounce his name. We are out of Pineview High School. So another local kid with, with Isaac Lees. Um, both these kids really, really excited about and they did some really good things in Region 9. We definitely want to focus on Region 9 here, uh, local kids, and make sure we do a good job recruiting them. Both those two are fantastic for us. Um, Cooper Wall out of Tumwater, Washington. Him and Rick are both missionaries, um, so we won't see them for a while, but um, definitely excited about them for sure. Um, transition right into a linebacker if, we, if you want. Yeah. Uh, Will, Will Leota, Salem Hills High School, 6'2", another big, tall, uh, longer linebacker. will get down and hit you. It was a great running back in high school, too, playing both sides of the ball. So he, um, definitely got work out of him. Um, Kyler Laufiso, missionary, Copper Hills High School, 6'4", 225, another kid that's tall, long, and rangy. Um, that makes some plays all over the field. So um, I thought, we, like I said, I thought we, I, I thought we addressed the needs that we had, um, and, and definitely in, in, in 23, <laughs> we're talking that far along. Um, in 23, when these guys get back from the mission, just adding value to our program, and, and um, we, we we understand the culture here in Utah, and we like that. We love having the missionaries. Uh, they're, they're more mature. They come back and add some leadership to our team, and so we want to focus on that too. But overall, a fantastic class, I think. Really high character kids, um, high GPA kids that'll come in here, and um, we'll, we'll just help them develop. Their parents did a fantastic job raising them, and now it's our, I guess it's our turn to, to take over. It looks like just one uh, one defensive back, Bryant Weekly, uh, yeah, out of Bryant, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, California. Yeah. Let's talk about him a little bit. You know, he's um, I believe Bryant's a three-star recruit out of, out of, out of uh, California. Again, another longer kid. Um, that's got potential to come in and help us help us right away. Um, uh, great personality, another high GPA kid. So um, definitely definitely excited about him. He's the one defensive back that we got. Good stuff, Coach. Looking forward to to these players. And obviously, you know, the transition to Division One is, is something that is going to be pertinent all the way throughout the end of the year. Is there something that you've noticed now? Obviously, this is your second signing class as you came in mm -hmm. last season and kind of just had the the tail end yeah. of that recruiting classes in Division Two. And now you're recruiting as a Division One school. Have you noticed any differences at recruiting from a Division Two to a Division One school like this season? Yeah, you know, I, I think the resources that uh, you know, Coach Judd can say it before too. You know, what our president and our athletic director have promised, it's happening, and so we're definitely excited about that. We up the money, we up the scholarship money. So, you know, these these kids, you know, they all want to pop their chest and show me the money. Well, we have it now, and we can we can match facilities and we can match scholarship dollars. And people want to be here, especially in Utah. They want to be in St. George. And so that, I think that's the biggest thing that we've able, you know, that I said it in our, in our first signing class, you know, we just didn't have as big a stick to swing. Well, we've got it now. We've matched, we've matched it. And so we're not, we're not, we're not missing uh, on some kids that we did before because, oh, they're Division II or they're making the jump. They're not quite ready yet. We're ready now. And um, I think these kids have been able to sense it. They, they saw our facilities on Zoom or online, and, and um, they want to be a part of it and want to be part of this transition. And then with the whack. With the new schools they got coming, and we got some Texas ties, and and um, they know we're playing some good football, and they want to be a part of it. So, I, th I think that's I think that's helping to make it a little bit easier. Just to, to the sell is a little bit easier. You know, they want to be a part of what we're doing. 
You mentioned it, Coach. Let's, let's talk about that. You, yeah. you mentioned the, the announcement the WAC had uh, brought, brought in five new schools, all football schools, and it's going to bring football back to the WAC, including uh, the, the, the rival, well, now going to be rival yeah. SUU up, up uh, just a few miles north. Talk about how fun it is now knowing that you've now got a home in the Western Athletic Conference with a, a good group of, of schools that are going to be comp competing at the FCS level. Yeah, you know, we thought it was going to happen eventually. We didn't think it was going to happen this fast. It's awesome. You know, these schools are really, really good. Those four Texas schools, they got a bunch of conference championships, national championships under their belt. Stephen F. And, and, and Sam Houston, really perennial good football teams, you know. We can't wait for the one up the street. You know, we tried to play them here in the springtime, and, and, and we had them open up in the fall, but COVID. And so that rivalry is going to be fantastic. We can't, wait to, we can't wait to play them. I don't even want to say their name, but, uh, <laughs> but um, we're right up there ready to compete with them. They've done some really good things, and, and you, we, we, we had some – Recruiting, recruiting battles in this in this signing class, which is always fun too, and and um, but we're we're ready to go. It's a fun, fun jump. It's going to be a certainly fun uh, transition. Uh, obviously, let's talk. You know, practices have started for this little yeah. shortened schedule you're going to have uh, here in the spring. Let's talk about you know practices getting going and yeah. your first matchup with Tarleton uh, at the end of the month is coming up very quickly. Yeah, what man. have you noticed? What's going on uh, with practices and getting ready for your first game? That's one thing that was interesting about this too. You know, normally you have a signing class, you're out there, you're getting in these kids' uh, faces and, and going to their school and doing home visits and then bringing him around campus. And so it's all that got cut out. Now on top of that, we're practicing <laughs> in the middle of this, you know. So, um, you know, we had, a, we had a couple breaks in practice where a couple coaches were like, oh, it came in, the scholarship came in on their phones, you know. And so that's just weird. It's just a little different, um, but um, definitely fluid. So everything's fluid right now. Um, our practice normally we'd have a fall camp. There's no camp, and we're, we're still we, we've got to do our 20 hours, and and the kids are in class, and so they're they're physically challenged right now. We um, uh, um, you know normally have a little bit more break in between stuff, but they got to hurry and go to class, so that balance in that schedule is a little bit tougher. Um, but yeah, three and a half weeks away. Um, it's awesome because our kids know we're going to play, and they're looking forward to that challenge to be able to play. And um, and before it was kind of like, what if, what if? And I think these teams like Tarleton, I know they're going to play and we're going to play. Um, we just got to be safe and make sure this COVID doesn't affect us. But we're going to play some football games. It's awesome. It's going to be a lot of fun, Coach. I know I've looked forward to it for, for a long time now that we've uh, uh, announced the Division One transition. Quick, before I let you, I'll let you go, I have to ask you, who do you got for uh, the big game on Sunday? Oh, big game on, like, who's playing? What are you talking about? <laughs> um, I, think, I think both teams are fantastic. I'm a big Tom Brady fan. I, I, think, uh, I think he's awesome. Heard it here first. Tom Brady. Go. Tom Brady give gets, his, Tom Brady gets his seventh one. victory on Sunday. Cool. He's head coach Paul Peterson of the football team. First game is February 27th at Tarleton State. It's going to be 2 p.m. Central time. You can catch live stats and video streaming information at DixieStateAthletics.com. Head coach Paul Peterson will be back on Trailblazer Weekly right after this timeout. There's a rush coming. Well, let's rush best nine plays from last week in Region 9. Number three, we go to the soccer field. Same field, different sport. Brianna Stewart bends it like Mia into the top corner pocket. Take a peek at your letters. You can uh, send us mail at any time. What's up with the stupid robot? His prediction percentage is lower than my dog's IQ, and my dog is dumb as a rock. Lawrence, are you going to do anything, or are you just going to sit there? There's one thing coaches love. It's media guys telling them how good or bad their team is. Today's show is brought to you by Rock Canyon Bank, serving Utah businesses and agriculture for over 25 years with locations in Pleasant Grove, Orem, Provo, Spanish Fork, Fillmore, and at 94 East Tabernacle, right here in St. George. Rock Canyon Bank, back to banking. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. 
Welcome back inside Trailblazer Weekly, man. It was fun to talk to uh, head coach uh, Paul Peterson about the new recruits and the newest members of the Dixie State Trailblazer football family. It's going to be fun. Uh, I can't wait to get these football games going and uh, get this, this football season, the shortened kind of uh, small schedule for uh, the spring uh, going. But uh, it's time for our final segment. Let's move in to our player of the week and let's give that award away right now. And it's going to Megan Trainer of the women's volleyball team. Megan Trainer was outstanding in the two matches uh, this week, uh, Monday and Tuesday against the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. Uh, 15 and a half kills per match, uh, 12 and a half assists per, per game, and, and eight and a half digs per game. She had a double-double uh, in Monday's matchup, and then she followed it up with a triple-double in, uh, in Tuesday's matchup, and Dixie State was able to go on and defeat uh, the Vaqueros in both of those matches in three sets apiece, and, and Megan Trainer was, was tremendous. She's a senior on this team, um, and she is uh, one of the, 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 the glue guys of this women's volleyball team, and, and I think they're, uh, they got a lot of uh, good things coming up for them in their uh, schedule for the rest of the season. Let's move on down to our highlights of the week. I call them highlights of the week. Normally it's just one, but it's highlights of the week this week because it comes from that women's volleyball matchup on Tuesday against the University of Texas right Rio Grande Valley. Trainer. We're going to start and off with it is Hardy. Kate Hardy. She took over in that final set, as you noticed. Uh, in these next Hardy. few points, she is the one that results in the kill on every single one of them. There was a run of 13 to 1 for Dixie State in that final set. And of those 13 points, Kate Hardy accounted for five kills and two block assists during that massive run that led the Trailblazers to win that third and decisive set in the final match of that game and and really was, was spectacular all the way throughout. Kate Hardy played tremendous uh, throughout the entire game. She uh, led the Trailblazers in kills with a career high 17 kills in that Tuesday matchup against the Vaqueros and she was sensational and those are our highlights of the week. Well deserved for Kate Hardy. And now let's transition into the final bit of this final segment, which is our game of the week. Our game of the week actually is the game of the day because it's going to happen a little bit later on today inside Greater Zion Stadium. It's the women's soccer taking on Gonzaga. That's right, the Bulldogs from Gonzaga are coming down to St. George to play women's soccer uh, today. In fact, a little bit later on today at 7 p.m. inside Greater Zion Stadium. The Zags from last season, a 12-6-1 overall record and a 5-3-1 record in uh, in their conference play. Certainly a team that, that you love to have come into your home home stadium and play and uh, going to be a fun matchup against, the, against Gonzaga. This women's soccer team, remember, coming off uh, the South Central Region title last season, a very, a very great season for this women's soccer team. It's going to be fun to see how they transition into Division One as they match up with one of the tougher opponents that you'll ever see in Division One uh, women's soccer, and that is going to be Gonzaga, the, the Bulldogs. It's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure you tune in to that game. You can find live stats at uh, DixieStateAthletics.com uh, to follow along and with that game, as that is our game of the week. A little bit later on today in Greater Zion Stadium. But that is going to do us do it for this episode of Trailblazer Weekly. want to give a big shout out to all of our sponsors, Rock Canyon Bank and the Dixie State Campus Store. want to thank everyone here at the CEC TV studios, and uh, we'll catch you later.